Let's answer two really big questions about a MET. So first one will be the obvious, so what is a MET? The second one's gonna be how do you use METs? All right, so let's again start with what is a MET? So MET stands for the metabolic equivalent of task. So that task can be any activity that you can think of. So um, people have uh, established metabolic equivalents for you know, running, cycling, gardening, anything you could possibly think of almost. Um, there's hundreds of METs uh, already established, and I'll show you where you find those later. All right, so one MET uh, is equal to the rate of the metabolic rate of you sitting relax. All right, so sitting there doing nothing, one MET, that's what you're doing. All right, so uh, an example sort of how this applies to activity is, um, so I looked up the metabolic equivalents for basketball. Um, in playing a basketball game is around eight METs. So that means that basketball is eight times more metabolically challenging on your body than rest, right? So if it's eight METs, that means it's eight times harder essentially than sitting relaxed. So that's a simple definition of what a MET is. But let's talk about some more concrete uh, sort of definitions and ways to use METs. So how do you use METs? All right, so first off, one MET equals 3.5 milliliters of oxygen uh, used for aerobic metabolism per kilogram of body mass per minute of whatever activity you're talking about. So again, that is one MET, 3.5. That, so that means at rest, most people are somewhere around 3.5 mLs per kg per minute. Um, so the good thing here is um, this, these are metabolic, these are VO2 or oxygen consumption units. And a MET is really a type of oxygen consumption unit. So you can go back and forth between METs and other VO2 units, whether it's mLs per kg per minute, or if you have the body mass of the person, um, you can also get it to the absolute VO2 units of liters per minute. All right, so that makes it nice for some exercise prescription type of calculations and tasks you might want to do. All right, so another sort of working definition of a MET is one MET equals one kilocalorie or, or calorie if you're in the United States. So one calorie um, per kilogram of body mass per hour of that activity. So if you do something that is five METs, that means you're going to be burning five kilocalories of, um, of energy per kilogram of body mass per hour of that activity. All right, so knowing this allows you to do some quick calculations to figure out how, uh, how many calories are burned during an activity. Another thing you can do with METs is use it to track exercise volumes um, using a, a unit called MET minutes. All right, so MET minutes is nothing more than the MET uh, intensity level multiplied by the minutes spent doing that exercise at that intensity. All right, so um, you can use this in order to, again, track exercise volumes for the day, for the workout, or for the week, which is probably the most common usage of it. Um, and with that, the ACSM, or the American College of Sports and Medicine, recommends that you do between 500 and 1,000 MET minutes per week in order to get the full health benefits from exercise. And the last major use of METs uh, for the practitioner is to uh, directly use it for exercise prescriptions. So, um, with that, there are some various tables like what I'm about to talk about here out there for more specific populations, but for just the general population, um, you can use any activity that is less than two minutes is very light. Two to 2.9 would be light. Three to 5.9 would be moderate intensity exercise. Six to 8.7 would be vigorous intensity exercise. And 8.8 .8 or higher would be near max or maximal exercise for most individuals. Now these are, these are estimates, so they're not gonna fit everybody perfectly, but this is sort of a, a general uh, sort of rule for how to classify exercise intensity from METs. All right, and so with all this, um, you're gonna need to be able to look up what the MET levels of various activities are. So um, you're gonna need to find MET tables. All right, um, I'm gonna be showing you in a second the Compendium of Physical Activities, which is uh, the most uh, all-inclusive MET table uh, database I've been able to find. The good thing is it's a free website. Um, so if you scan this QR code here, it's going to take you to that website. And let's go ahead and look at that website right now. 
All right, so this is the Compendium of Physical Activities. Um, there's a lot of really good information on this website. I highly suggest you sort of search around these different um, uh, menus here. Um, what I want to highlight, though, and show you is how to figure out the met levels of various activities. So if you go to Activity Categories, and notice I didn't even click it. I just put my mouse over it, and this list popped up of all these different categories of exercise. All right, so let's go to, say, you know, Conditioning Exercise. And you, again, you can see there's lots of different categories here. But if I go to Conditioning Exercise, this gives me this really long list of all these different exercises that we can choose from, and then we can look up what the MET level is. And so the Compendium of Physical Activities has been updated multiple times, so you always want to try to use the most up-to-date list. Um, so they do list the 93 and 2000 versions. Um, the most up-to-date list currently is the 2011 Compendium. And so that's what I would recommend using is this 2011 column. So right here where it says METS, this is the column you want to look at uh, to figure out the intensity level. And then here's the description of the activity. Um, so let's scroll down to something of interest. So maybe bicycling on a stationary um, bike um, general. So there's various types of bicycling here. Generally speaking, exercise bike, uh, bicycling, they're saying is around seven METS. So let's scroll down some more, maybe doing circuit training um, at a moderate effort. Um, and this is very subjective, a lot of these, but uh, circuit training at a moderate effort would be around 4.3 uh, METS. Um, if we were to, let's see, use a stair treadmill ergometer, so a, like a stair, um, stair master type uh, uh, machine. That would be around nine METs, uh, they're saying. Of course, it changes based on if you increase the speed or not. Um, but again, this is sort of a generic uh, intensity level that you can use when you need to and you can't do better calculations than what METs allow you to do. Um, keep in mind, um, something I didn't say, but the MET was originally designed for epidemiological research, not so much for specifically using it on one person, um, but it can be used for that if you understand its limitations and some of the estimations that go into it. Um, so <clears throat> a couple more examples here, stretching 2.3 METs, Pilates 3, 3 METs. All right, so again, you can see how you can quickly look up several kinds of activities and all those activity categories we didn't go into in order to figure out the best um, activity for whatever exercise intensity you're trying to prescribe with your client. If you're going to use METS in order to do exercise prescription for yourself or for others, you're probably going to want to learn to do some of the basic calculations to get from one unit to the next and you know how to uh, actually calculate calories and uh, from a MET and all those sorts of things. So I'm going to go ahead and put some links in the description below to some videos I've already made uh, that will talk about how to do that. So hopefully those are helpful to you as well.